Hello and welcome to episode 40 of my Salem tutorial series. This episode is going to be on learning the tanning skill um, which will put us on the path to the road to leather working and also i am decided it's important that I show you fighting at least one beaver. Beavers um, are the first difficult step in our combat as in if you don't get it right and there's more than one beaver then you're fast going to get in trouble especially with our humours being so well our humours are not very low but I would say you're not going to attack a beaver with less than 25 in your yellow bile your yellow bile is the one which decides that you can beat the beaver because not only is it uh, it's your it's not only how hard you're going to hit it's how much you can keep going and of course it's these three skills which you definitely will need in order to fight a beaver so I found a beaver I've had to wander for ages and ages sometimes they're difficult to find sometimes they'll spawn right near you anyway before we attack the beaver you remember in the previous episode when we skinned the beaver we didn't get the most important component which was a brain so in order to rectify that we are going to learn the tanning skill which will enable us you will see when we skin this beaver if the beaver don't skin us first you will see we will get a brain in order to learn the tanning skill we will need 850 hammer and nail 2650 uh, and 50 hunting and hide working and 1275 thread and needle to achieve this I'm going to study these stones. Should hopefully be three st smooth stones and two mermaid, mermaid's purse, but we'll see. Mm. So let's study these because I don't want that beaver getting mm. away. Let's see. Let's study. Mm. Let's study. Mm. Let's wait for the food to go up. Oh, there's the beaver. Let's study again. Hmm. Right, okay, so I am still just a bit short. Oh, it's thread and needle. No, it isn't. Um, hunting and hide working is done. Hammer and nail is done. Let's see, what am I missing here? Ah, I'm 20 short in hunting and hide working. Well, as luck would have it, I did wonder whether I'd have enough. I know it's a waste to use a dead warbite cricket, but when you... Oh, wait a minute. No, there's even better. But no, I will. I'll use a dead warbite. Mm. There we go. Let's learn tanning. Right, great. That will allow us to build a tanning tub to tan the hides that we are going to collect. I will only use the rabbit hides for making leather. All the beaver hides I will use for selling. Right, let's now attack this beaver. So try and line it up in a straight line. Use your skill which will knock stun him and then use your roundhouse kick. That's all I'm going to do now, roundhouse kick. And there we are done see I've hardly used any yellow bile but trust me if your yellow bile is too low and you attack a beaver you won't be doing the damage and it's going to make it much more difficult much more risk of more beavers joining in if there are a group of beavers in an area make sure you single one out because they will join together they also also the beavers if you let them wander off they will do this dance and it's a nasty dance and it's not a dance you want to do with the beaver so kill it as quickly as you can by simply running into it with let's tell you the skills I used run into it with bull run that stuns it long enough for you to do as many roundhouse kicks as necessary to kill it right now getting back to our road to leather working when you kill your beaver the very first thing you should always do like I mentioned previously is skin it if you butcher first you will lose the option to skin and thereby lose the skin which you'll want 
for selling or making leather, so we will skin. There we go, we got a raw beaver pelt we can put on the drying rack and then sell it. Now let's show you what you get when we butcher. You've seen before me butchering a beaver, let's show you again now. So right click, left click butcher. Now the first item we get is one, oh okay there's something rare. Oh nice, wow, look at this, I'm getting all sorts of rares. You don't normally get these, that is what I was looking for, the brain. As gruesome as it may sound, the brain is the best way to um, make your tanning. So we've been boiling up uh, birch bark, haven't we, getting tanning that way. Well, if our tanning is not uh, does not have enough, if the liquid does not have enough tanning, actual fluid in it we can add brains to it to condense it because it may be too diluted the tanning we've been making anyway I will do it show you that in a video anyway just to have a look here these are very rare items that I have very rarely seen especially the beaver tail now that's nice hunting and hide working so that will prove helpful in the future and that as you can see we can either slot it uh, though I won't be slotting, I'm not. I've not got into tailoring yet. That's still in the distant future. Um, for now, we're on the road to leather working. So there we go. I'll probably use that for hunting and hide working. It's got some good things on it. But the most important is the brain. Plus, we've got some meat for cooking and some bones for cooking as well. We do not use the bone as a fertilizer. We will be using the bones for cooking. Now, so you can see I've been wandering around. That's how long it's taken me to find the beavers. You can see all the stuff I've been picking up. Um, but there we are. So, now I'd like to be able to show you how to use the brain to make the tanning. But I think I'm a long way off from... I was going to show you the turkey coop as well. So let's just see. You can always stop the video if you don't want to wait for me to get back there but I do want to show you the turkey coop and how it's progressing and we can look at the bee skep remember to check your bee skep once a day because if more than one queen spawns you could collapse the hive if you don't take the second one out I think either the second one will die or collapse the hive if you keep two queens in a bee skep so we need to check that I don't think I'm that far away. It's just how messed up the terrain is to get back. See, I'm going to have to come over here at some point and flatten it all. I see it as my duty to flatten the lands of Salem because I enjoy the ticking and terraforming so much. I spent hours and hours the other day terraforming to the north of me. So if I do get a snake attack me, then I can easily outrun it because all the terrain I've made flat. I must show you that at some point, although you won't see the work I've done because it was buckled up the land. There were holes and hills all over the place and towers of dirt all over the place. And one of the towers of dirt was absolutely huge. I spent about 12 hours getting that sorted out. But in the end I got there. Now it's just a little mound of dirt, well, a big mound of dirt that's walkable over. So if I get attacked and chased, I know that I can head in that direction safely. Whenever you're passing a spruce tree, always check to see if you can get your pine cones. Because as you know, they are very, very useful and always will be. So always grab your pine cones for filling up, especially our compost bins. Um, you know when you get the scales they go in the compost bin so I always make a point whenever I pass any uh, spruce trees I always get the pine cones if there's any there I've also found two bits of salt so I want to also in this episode show you how to destroy a field which I ought to have done by now really but I didn't want to waste the salt but I've got enough now Okay, so I'm just the other side of this lake, so nearly back. Do not worry, do not fear. 
Okay, so let's just walk around this lake and get back. So anyway, you can see beavers, if you use just ball run and uh, the um, roundhouse kick, they are a piece of cake. But the only annoying thing can be when hunting a beaver is if you do not line it up in a straight line and you do ball run, ball run is like the sling. With the sling, when you fire, it shoots in a straight line. So if the creature moves off, you miss. Same with ball run. If you don't time it right or line it up correctly you end up ball running into thin air and wasting your precious yellow bile. So but if you get it tight if you get your first ball run correct then the fight is a piece of cake and you will kill lots of beavers if you can find them that is because they're pretty rare. Right now so back to the business at hand. The first thing I was going to mention about was the tanning. Now what I'm doing is I'm making a barrel full. At the moment I've only got uh, 22.50 worth of tanning fluid. So what I will do is I can either left click the brain and right click it on the barrel to add it to the fluid in there. But what I'm going to do I decided was make a tanning uh, so if we go into build you'll see what I'm going to talk about and tools and utilities the tanning tub I'm going to use the brain on the tanning tub once I've filled it with tanning because if it's too diluted once I've filled it with my birch bark tanning then I will just simply add brains to it until it's condensed enough to be usable you'll see anyway you'll see that notice over here um, Tosh very kindly mentioned about I believe it was Tosh Forgive me if it was someone else, but yeah, no, it was Tosh. Tosh mentioned about how in the future with the fields, it's going to affect it when you put structures on the fields. So I decided to make use of this clay area. With the um, compost bins, you can move them if they have humus and worms in them, but you have to make sure you've drained out the organic materials to zero before you can move a compost bin. With this compost bin over here, I, I let it empty out of its uh, organic materials and then moved it, even though it was full of all of this stuff. Once it got to zero, I moved it, and then once it's over here, I've started to put um, materials back in to fill up the uh, organic materials. So you can move compost bins, but the organic materials has to be completely empty on zero. Doesn't matter if there's all these items in it, you can still move it, but this has to be completely empty. So there we are, I moved that. Right, let's have a look at the bee skip next. The fish traps are doing well, they're doing too well. I'm starting to fill up loads of large urns with crawdads and um, crabs, and so. I'm holding back on that at the moment because we can't yet cook them but I will pick some garlic whenever I see it because when we get into gardening we're gonna have some fun anyway so I want to show you let's have a look at the bee skip remember whenever you take hay from your hay bale to replace the grass so you'll always have fresh hay okay and remember only check your bee skip once a day if you do it more than once a day you risk collapsing your colony so let's right click Oh, let's take out the Delphic B. You'll see the drones die, but they come back. Once you've put a minimum of five in, and it is a minimum of five, I've noticed otherwise they die off. But if you put five in, then they start to accumulate the drones. And very rarely a queen will spawn in here. When the queen spawns, you will also get a royal jelly. Over here we can see honey, so we'll be able to collect honey eventually. For now I'm just leaving all of that because we're on the path to leather. So, okay, let's. last thing I want to show you quickly is the turkey coop which we made before. All these items you see are you going to have to constantly monitor them and with all of the items in fact you can ignore them all. But there is one you cannot ignore and that is the one I'm going to show you now. 
all of these other items, the compost bin, the bee skep, well, you, it is good to check the bee skep in case more than one queen spawns. But apart from that, you can pretty much leave that. But with your turkey coop, you have to check it. The reason being, if your food gets to zero, turkeys die. Now, in here, you'll notice I've got just one male gobbler and one hen for now. The reason being is because I want to give myself a bit of time before they start chewing through the food. In other words, I want to load more fields, so I'll have a load more seeds to keep uh, the turkey, the, the food level full. I mean, I've got loads of common earthworms to do that with, but planning ahead with when I've got a few of these coops I've learned a hard lesson and that is don't put too many hens in because they'll eat too much food and if you have a break for a week they'll all you'll come back and they'll all be dead so the best thing to do is just do it gradually slowly so I've started with one of each the hens won't lay eggs for at least a few days after that you'll notice that underneath your hens eggs will appear they'll eventually turn into chicks so I'll move the chicks to the next slot along and it will eventually either turn into a gobbler or a hen if it turns into a gobbler it's for the cooking pot if it turns into a hen it can then lay more eggs there is a very rare chance of getting a golden goose if you get that you're very lucky because you're gonna have golden eggs but I've never seen one but they are rumoured to be out there. Now, this is the main reason, though, for our turkey coops. The turkey droppings. As I said to you before, I will be using one turkey dropping and one wood chopping per field. And that's all I will have to do to all my fields to keep me nice and rich and being able to do whatever I want. So, there we are. I think I've kept you long enough. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep every last one of you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Goodbye.